it available as a part of 5G, uh, the usage of a large number of antennas, uh, beam steering and beam switching as key technologies uh, in millimeter wave. So the test bed that we have running and Andreas is going to go through the entire test bed and then we'll be streaming this live from New Jersey. So this is being done in our New Jersey office and we're on a Skype call from there and we'll be showcasing how things work. Uh, <clears throat> but uh, this is the demo that will be shown live in Barcelona as well. And uh, this is our first uh, live 5G demo. Oh, that will be done. So, Andreas, why don't you get going? I love yeah. what you've done with the place. <laughs> <laughs> it's very New Jersey. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay. Are we ready? Yeah, we're ready. Also. So, this is my colleague in New Jersey. He's going to actually talk through you know, most of the demo. What you see here is like uh, three different monitors. On the left side, we basically like see um, this three dimensional like sphere. And then on the right side, you see more like uh, the antenna configuration on the mobile side. So you have different antenna elements, and he's going to talk about, you know, once we see it switch and what they kind of mean. Um, this is actually happening in New Jersey. Um, there's an empty floor in the building. So we're using this as our test bed. You can see here is the, um, this is the base station setup, and here's the mobile setup. And basically, we're going to move that around, and then you will see, like, kind of the impact Sorry. on that. It's a 28 gigahertz um, link, and in this case, it's a point-to-point -point link, but the base station could support multiple users as well. And it's at 28 uh, gigahertz um, frequency. So one of the other things we talked about in the morning was that uh, to validate the technology, I mean, we've got to make sure that it works with uh, different kinds of impairments, uh, including non-line-of-sight communication, as in, it's not just that you can see the device in front of you, but even bending around the corners, etc. Um, and how do you beam steer accordingly? How sensitive is 28 gigahertz uh, for line of sight compared to 60? Because six, I'm fairly familiar with uh, 60. Is is there a significant difference for from the user perspective to 28? Th there is a difference over there, obviously, just because of the propagation mm -hmm. characteristics, it becomes far more stringent. Uh, Non-line of sight is a little more doable with 28 gigahertz, mm -hmm. but it's not like there's a huge difference over there. Uh, but I think the key part is some of the uh, extensive amount of beam steering that is done in 28 gigahertz. You don't usually see that in products yet, but uh, in 60, but 28 gigahertz, it's something that we believe that uh, it's not only um, essential because that's the only way we can bring millimeter wave technology into the mobile world. Uh, uh, it's also uh, place of research for us. How many antennas do we need? We talked about two to four receive antennas in the morning, uh, but for millimeter wave, that's not yet going to cut it. We need a larger number of antenna elements and so on. So Oscar so will go into the on, on 60 gigahertz also with our 11AD products, right? Those we demonstrated access mm -hmm. using 11AD. And even there, we say if you have a closed space, you can still get Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, I mean, I'm, not, I'm familiar with line it. Of I'm side. just trying to get the how different 28 is to right. my okay. expectations on yeah. 60. Yeah, and the, the focus of this demo is not so much on data rates. It's more about, I mean, we already do multi-gigabit per second on the 1180 mm -hmm. product. It's really, as Durga and uh, Andrea said, well, beam steering technologies to bring it out into the mobile space. Gotcha. <coughs> Oscar? Go ahead, Oscar. So, so right, right now, what you're seeing is the base station on the, you're the right side of the screen and the UE on the left side. <coughs> So both of these actually have a phased array uh, system, so for beam tracking and beam scanning. On the base station, we have 128 elements. There are 16 uh, columns, only steerable and azimuth, so there's no elevation steering. And on the UE, we have four subarrays of four antennas each, and each of those subarrays is a phased array, so they uh, to track the the base station. Uh, so we'll have a demo of first line, line of sight operation, and then show how the UE tracks the base station by turning the UE. Uh, and then we'll move it back and we'll show how the base station will track the UE in uh, both line of sight and then slightly non-line of sight in one scenario, and then back to line of sight. If you look at the GUI right now, we can see that the base station and UE are facing each other. So on the, on the right side, where it says millimeter wave base station, the antenna is essentially, the beam is essentially pointing straight to the left of your video screen. So it's just right in the middle because it's facing the UE right now. 
the UE orientation, essentially the UE is about a 30 degree angle facing out of the screen. So where you see the red patches is where the energy is, and the, that's in that orientation of the video is essentially pointing to that base station. So right now, the base station and UE are pointing at each other, and that's reflected in the, the beam pattern of the base station and the red um, heat, pack, heat map of the, the UE. So right now, we'll first start by rotating the UE, and we'll show that the left part of your screen will track the base station as the UE rotates. And first you'll see that we're on the same subarray, as you just saw that there's a, a beam pattern change. So we're on the same subarray. The subarray is located in four different spots on the form factor type of um, antenna module to really uh, show what, what we would get in a real handset. And as we rotate it now, that it's a, a different subarray. So the subarrays combined cover an omni type of space, so they cover the whole sphere. So as we turn the, the UE, different subarrays kick in, and then each of the subarrays will track the UE, the, the base station. Now we're moving back, and at some point, there's a column right in the middle of your screen, and that actually creates a non line of sight type of um, link. It's, um, it's hard to tell in the video, but that's actually right in between the UE and the base station. And you can see now that the base station is also tracking UE. Before we were pointing almost directly at the zero degrees, and now we're at minus 20. So as the UE is moving, we're continually tracking it. And the same thing with the, the UE. The UE is also continually charging the, the base station. So now we're again back into a minus site type of uh, environment. And the UE is now facing the base station, but now the base station is actually, actually at minus 30 degrees. And this environment actually, in, even though it's, it's open space like this, it's actually a very rich environment, it's a hard environment to work in because all these the windows that you see are very reflective, highly reflective. There's a lot of metal in this environment that are highly reflective. Um, so it's, it's a somewhat tougher environment to form a link and, make, and track the link than it is outdoors in, in many ways. So now we're moving the UE further back. And as we move further back, we'll again position ourselves behind a few columns and then eventually get behind the, that partition wall. So that, that wall actually has a, a stairwell and elevator shaft behind it which is you can't penetrate because of uh, cinder blocks. And so now we'll start getting into a mode of operation of through um, either reflections from the windows or diffraction along that edge of the, the drywall. So we're moving back. I think we're still probably on the side. So at this point, we've probably gone to diffraction because you see that the base station is now minus 10. So it's kind of shifted back. Now it's pointing towards the edge of that drywall, and the UE is still tracking. And as you move further back, when diffraction is not as, as strong as reflection, we might see the base station now move, um, change angle, and go for a reflective path. And throughout this, all the turning and moving, going to line line side, the line of side, we've always maintained the link. There's some variability, but we maintain the link yet through background scanning of the optimal link. Okay, so now we're in the non-line of sight position and we're still maintaining a link and we're at our highest MCS level, <coughs> even in this distance. Okay, that concludes our demo.